um, God's nature is how He is, okay? So here we talk about serving. God is humble and He's a serving God, okay? God Himself, He is humble and He, he comes with humility to serve us. So he, His nature is He is a humble God and He's a serving God. And then God's grace. Now, when you talk about grace, it always has us in there. That's what He does for us, okay? So He serves us in infinite number of ways. When we talk about serve, then we think about how God Himself serves us. And He serves us in so many different ways. He created us. He created nature. He sent the Holy Spirit to move in our heart. He does all these wonderful things. He guides us in our life. He forgives our sin and He prepares heaven for us. And He gives us spiritual gifts. All these are ways that He serves us. So He's a serving God. And when we are weak, He gives us strength. So these are many different ways. So we want to think about God's work. Now you might say, how come, uh, uh, Pastor, you can think of so many things God has done for us. God is doing for us because I always think about God is what is doing and I read the Bible and I see that God is doing many things for us so I remember all these things God, that God is doing for us okay so he serves us in infinite number of ways and he created the world and us he created the world and he sent Jesus to die for us and the Holy Spirit moves us to repentance he transforms our lives so all these are ways that He serves us. So related to the theme, we want to serve God because God first serves us. And then He motivates us to love and serve Him. So He changed our heart. So it's related to us serving Him. It's Him who changes us so that we will serve God. Without His motivation, we cannot serve God. It's Him who motivates us and change our nature so that we want to serve God. And He gives us spiritual gifts so He can serve us. And then also, there are other points as well. He gives us opportunities. He gives us team workers to uh, serve God together. He gives us a church so that we can serve God there. And then He rewards us in this life and in the future. So these are ways of God's grace related to serving God. But some people, they just wrote, Okay, Jesus died for us. He gave us salvation. And they think grace is just Jesus died for us and give us salvation and forgiveness. Jesus, God's grace has many, many points. He blesses us in different ways, many, many different ways. We have to think about what God has done in our life, how He changes our life, how He gives us strength to serve Him, how He rewards us, how He teaches us to serve how He uses other people to teach us to serve and guide us to serve, how He gives us the church so that we can have the opportunity to serve God. So it's up to you how to talk about what God has done to help us to serve God, how much you want to talk about. So that's something we want to think about first before we can preach to other people. And then when we understand how God has worked in our life so that we can start to serve God, and then when we serve Him, He will bless us, then we understand how good God is related to serving God. Whatever, whatever we talk about, God is gracious. He gives us many blessings so that we can follow Him in that area. And then He reward us and He has so many blessings. So we want to appreciate God all the time. God is so good. So when we preach to people, people will say, God is so good. God is so wonderful. I can see from your I can hear from your message that God is wonderful therefore I want to serve him because then God will bless me and reward me and give me strength and live my life to a higher level okay and then why so we point out the problem why many Christians don't serve God because they are not willing to serve sacrifice because they are burdened with their problems and there are other reasons too uh, it's up to you how much you want to talk about depends on the people some people just think that they can take God lightly. They don't take God seriously. They can just neglect God's work and they think they can get away with it. That's not true. Nobody can get away from God's word. Nobody can get away from God's eyes. God sees our problems. So we don't think that we can run away from God's eyes. 
He will see all our problems. Okay, so why many Christians don't serve God? Because they think that, well, I'll just serve God in my last year of my life, when I retire, when I have more time. But actually, we can serve God anytime. Anytime we see a person, we can glorify God and tell Him how wonderful God is. We can share to other Christians and say how much God has blessed me, therefore I, I love Him, I serve Him. So we can encourage other people. These are ways that we can serve God. Okay, and then reminder and warning. If a person does not serve God at all, there might be problems with his faith and he is a wicked and lazy servant. That's in Matthew 25, 26. He can be punished by God. And then God will not honor him. According to the verse we read today, that when we serve him, 12, 26, John 12, 26, if a person serves Jesus, then the Father will honor him. But if he doesn't serve Jesus, then the Father does not honor him. And then his life, uh, that God will call him a lazy and wicked and lazy servant. Okay, so how? How can we start to serve God? Okay, so first believe that God blesses those, uh, uh, those serving, those who, there's a word here, who, those who serve him uh, faithfully. So whoever serves Him faithfully, God will bless them. God will remember them. God, will, God is pleased with them. So we know that, wow, God is so good. He blesses us, whatever we do for Him. Now some people don't believe this. They don't believe this. But the Bible does say that. So when we believe there is God, and God is real, and the Bible is God's Word. We believe every word in the Bible. We believe that what the Bible says that He, you know, wh whoever, whatever we do to a little one, we give a cup of cold water to a little one, by no means we will lose the reward. So God will for sure bless us. And then B, have compassion on those who need the gospel and need revival. So how can we serve God more when we have compassion on people? People who don't have Jesus. People who have Jesus, but they don't obey Him. They don't, they don't love Him. Now, why do I do the broadcast uh, to you? Because I care about you. I want you to be revived. And we raise money so that we can help you buy equipment. But I want people to concentrate in learning, not, to, not in buying equipment. Some people just want the money. I want you to concentrate in the learning. When you concentrate in the learning, God is pleased with you and He can bless you directly, not just through us. And when we serve God willingly, God provides for us so that we can help you. So I hope that you learn to say, yes, we want to learn, we want to grow, we want to always glorify God in our messages, in our lives, in our words, in our action. We always glorify God. So. How do we motivate people to serve God? So we motivate people to have compassion on those who need the gospel and need revival. And then when we have compassion on them, God is pleased with us. And when we have compassion, then we will start to bless them and help them. Okay, and then receive training on serving God. We need training. And then start by helping the people around us with the gospel. Pray and help. Okay, so start by helping the people around us with the uh, with the gospel uh, with the gospel with our prayer and with our help okay so help the people around us help the people in the church help our neighbors help our family members that is serving God already serving God is not just in the church it can be anywhere when we, whenever we see anyone we can talk to them about Jesus we can glorify God in our daily life that is serving God. And then encourage ourselves that we are serving. So we can say, I'm serving God now. I'm blessing other people. I can be very happy. So we, we should learn to be happy for what we do for God. And then say, oh, I'm serving God now. And God is very happy with me. And then we are happy that we are serving God. Then we are encouraged. So we want to encourage ourselves when we serve God. Okay. Okay, so that... That was the last message. Now let me show to you how I preached this message 
in one continuous flow okay in one uh, just flow through the message okay excuse me <coughs> Excuse me. Something just happened here, so I'm fixing it now. Excuse me. Okay, now. Um, Okay, so I'll demonstrate here again the message, John 12, 26. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him my Father will honor. Okay, so um, if I want to preach this message, this is how I will go. Okay, so I look at the passage and say, you know, Jesus encourages and tells us that if anyone serves uh him let the person follow him and then wherever Jesus goes there his servants should go also and then if anyone serves him and follow him the father will honor him and will bless him and will do great things in his life so Jesus is encouraging us to serve him so Jesus is is telling us that people who serve God are honored by God they are honorable people to he encourages us now, that's what we should do. And the Bible does tell us that if we don't serve God, then we are the wicked, wicked and lazy servant. And we don't want to be the wicked and lazy servant. That they will be thrown into the outer darkness and they will gnash the teeth and wail there. That is terrible. So we don't want to be the lazy servant. And we want to serve God. And then God will honor us and bless us. But it's a fact that many Christians don't serve God. Now, the, the reason why they don't serve God because they just don't, take it seriously and also they are tied up with the problem so they don't think of serving God and and they don't realize that serving God is in our daily lives and also many people don't have joy in their life so that they so they don't uh, serve God with the with the joy and with the action because they're always uh, burdened with the problems okay so these are the examples of the people now God's grace first he is a serving God he tell us to serve him he serves us first. He serves us all the time, every day. He lifts up our life. He keeps our life healthy. He does everything for us so that we can be healthy, so that we can, can have spiritual strength, so he, the Holy Spirit moves in us so that we'll follow Him, and He gives us spiritual gifts, and He gives us strength so that we can f serve Him. And then He'll reward us. So He does all this thing for us, so that we can serve Him. So we can see that God makes it possible for us to serve Him. God doesn't just tell us to serve Him. God does everything necessary to help us to serve Him. He changes our life. He motivates us. He gives us the Holy Spirit to teach us. He gives us uh, guidance uh, from the Holy Spirit and also with, from other people, from the church. And then He would also give us the Word of God to guide us to obey Him and serve Him. And then, and then whenever we serve Him, we do feel joyful. Now many people when they serve God, they find that they're more joyful, they're more happy when they can help someone to believe in Jesus. When they help someone to grow in Jesus, they become joyful and they enjoy serving God. So God will bless us right away. God will reward us right away. So it's more blessed, more blessed to serve Him. Okay, now, but why do Christians still don't serve Him? 
because they are lazy, because they don't take the word of God seriously. They think I'll wait later, or they are burdened by the problems, or they are uh, they just look at the negative things and then they say, I don't want to serve God anymore. Or they have been hurt when they serve God and then they don't want to serve God anymore. So these are the, some of the reasons why the people don't serve God. And we want to fix those problems. We want to fix our problem why we don't serve God. And then the warning of God is that if we don't serve God, we can become the wicked and lazy servant. We can lose our salvation if we don't serve God at all. Then our faith is without works. Now, we are never saved by works. We are not saved by doing good. We are not saved by serving God. We are saved by grace through faith. When we trust in Jesus as our Savior, then we are saved. And when we are saved, then we'll, we'll grow and we'll bear fruit. We'll love people, we'll care about people, and we'll serve God. And if a person doesn't serve God at all, he doesn't glorify God at all, then there's something wrong with his faith and and he might not have salvation at all. So that's a warning. And then how? How can we start to serve God? First, so we encourage the members. Okay, first, we ourselves. We, we ourselves set a good example. I've been serving God faithfully because I'm motivated by God. And I hope that you see my motivation to serve God, that you grow in serving God. And we think about how God serves us. And how God blesses those who serve Him. So that motivates us to serve Him. And if we don't serve Him, then God is not happy with us. And then we can be the wicked and lazy servant. So we won't, don't want to be like that. So we, we want to believe that. Yes, when we serve God, God is very happy. And we respond to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has moved us to care about people. The Holy Spirit has moved us to do evangelism. The Holy Spirit has moved us to strengthen other Christians, to serve God in church, to build up the church, to encourage other people. So we respond to the Holy Spirit. We, uh, and then when we respond to the Holy Spirit, we'll feel joyful. And then we can encourage ourselves. I'm serving God and God is happy and I feel joyful. Thank God for that. Thank God for that. And then we'll receive training and we'll find, seek opportunities to serve God. And then when we serve God, we also want to follow Jesus. Jesus said, whoever serves me, follow me. So we want to follow Jesus. We want to have a close relationship with Him so that He can change our life, so that our, our action, our words, our smiles can encourage other people. And then people can see our lives and then they say, wow, He's full of the love of God. He's full of the joy of God. And then we can change people more. We can bring more people to Jesus. And then we can help more Christians to be revived. So do you want to serve God and be pleased, be pleasing to God and your life will go higher and higher? I hope you have this motivation. And you can start by blessing the people around you in the church, blessing the people in the family, in the neighborhood, that we want to start to bless the people around us. That is already serving God. We want to share our experiences in God, how God has blessed us. We want to share the gospel how Jesus loves us, how Jesus is wonderful, and Jesus gives us joy all the time when we come to Him. We want to tell people about Jesus' wonderful work. We want to tell people when they follow Jesus, then the whole life will be blessed, and God can help us in every area of our life. So we encourage people like that, and then people will be encouraged, <clears throat> and people will start to serve God. So we want to serve God ourselves, and we encourage other people to serve God, and we work as a team. We work as a team together. And we encourage each other. We see someone serve faithfully. We say, you're doing great. You're doing great. You're wonderful. You're wonderful. God is happy with you and I'm happy with you. And that is how we can encourage each other to serve God. Okay? So here I demonstrate that I preach this message. So I hope that uh, you see that I always glorify God. See how God, how wonderful God is and what God has done in our life so that, so that people are motivated to serve Him and then whenever we do to serve Him, God is very, very happy. So I hope that you, you learn this and then really appreciate God, okay? Now I have a second message here. John 5, 14. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. That is what Jesus said to the man who was 
uh, sick for 38 years and then Jesus healed him and then said to him stop sinning or something worse may happen to you okay now so first I go through this first and then uh, I'll demonstrate preaching the message uh, in, uh, as a whole okay interpretation of passage Jesus told the person, the man, to stop sinning or something worse may happen to him. That means if he continues to sin, he will lose his blessings and he can be attacked by Satan. He, something worse will happen. That Satan can attack him and, you know, still kill and destroy his life. And Satan, you know, get a foothold in his life when he sins. And then whenever we sin, there are serious consequences because then the worst will happen to us. And then Satan will find a way to attack us. So this passage is telling us that even when we ask for forgiveness, God will forgive us. But there will be uh, something worse that will happen. Something destructive will happen. Now we see that in David. David committed adultery and murder. And he seriously confessed his sin to God. God forgives him, forgave him, and then, but God said to him, the sword will not depart from your family. The sword will follow your family, that David will be punished. So there will be serious consequences of sin. So we need to understand there are serious consequences of sin. And then when we obey God, God is very happy and God will bless us. Okay? Examples. Many Christians continue to have depression, anger, greed, lust, fornication, as a result, their lives are full of problems and they don't receive God's blessing, okay? Now here I list some examples of people's sin and people don't think that depression is sin. Now depression is basically having no faith. And the Bible says, you know, that, uh, that without faith we cannot please God. You know, whatever is without faith is sin. So when a person has depression, he doesn't believe in God's goodness. That is already sin. Or when a person is angry because he, you know, he, he let his uh, anger control him. And then in his anger, it's easy for him to hurt other people. And then greed and lust or fornication or adultery uh, or not obeying God, not praying, not serving God. All these are sins. As a result, the sin, their lives are full of problems and they don't receive God's blessing. So, so many people, you know, many people came to me for help because I have many videos online and many people call me up and ask for help. And then they tell me, oh, they, they uh, cannot find strength from God and they have poor relationship with people. They have problem finding a job. They are fired easily and uh, they are depressed, they are unhappy. Many people are like that because they don't follow God in their lives. They just follow their sinful way. They just follow the negative thinking and negative emotions. They just look at the problems and then they are unhappy most of the time. And we can see right there the destructiveness of sin. The whole life is uh, destroyed gradually. They don't have joy, they don't have strength, they have poor relationship with people. They don't have a steady job. They, ha uh, they have depression and uh, all kinds of problems. So, so these are examples of people don't, who don't follow God. Uh, they don't obey God. They sin. And then God's nature and grace. Now, here is God's nature. God is holy and He hates sin. Heaven is beautiful because there is no sin in heaven. So, Many people think of holiness as something very strict, but actually holiness is joyful. Holiness is beautiful. Holiness is wonderful. Heaven is full of holiness. And in heaven, there is no pain, no suffering, no mourning, no crying, no sadness, no depression, no fighting. It is enjoyable there. 